Hello everyone, and welcome back to the Fluctus channel. Even after more than a hundred years of flight, operating an aircraft remains a risky business. Due to the mechanical malfunction, pilot error, and dozens of other reasons, planes and helicopters still suffer crashes all around the world. When a crash occurs involving one or more military planes, the United States will deploy the CDDAR, or Crashed, Damaged, and Disabled Aircraft Recovery Unit. This highly trained team of personnel uses specialized tools vehicles, and equipment to safely and efficiently recover damaged aircraft in various hazardous situations. The unit generally consists of engineers, mechanics, and technicians whose primary goal is to rescue the crew. Hey, then begin the recovery of the aircraft itself. Training SEDAR crews would be an expensive endeavor if the United States military did not have access to thousands of decommissioned aircraft. Thanks to the Boneyard program, SEDAR teams can perfectly simulate the experience of working on a real damaged or crashed aircraft at a fraction of the cost. Aircraft boneyards are large open-air storage facilities for retired aircraft. These facilities are usually located in dry, arid climates, as this helps to prevent corrosion and other forms of damage to planes and helicopters. Though it's not impossible for a decommissioned airplane to be called back into service, boneyard aircraft are generally used for replacement parts, recycling, and training events. As convenient as boneyards can be for SEDAR training, they don't always allow for the necessary sense of realism. In reality, planes and helicopters don't just crash in open desert environments. So to ensure maximum training effectiveness, SEDAR teams will often train in a variety of situations. This decommissioned CH-53 Sea Stallion is specifically designed to carry heavy loads. For that reason, it weighs in excess of 23,000 pounds. Moving it safely requires the SEDAR team to use large mobile cranes and heavy-duty lifting straps. But the team is responsible not only for recovering the aircraft, but also for any parts that may have detached during the incident. In this scenario, the military placed various pieces of the CH-53 around the simulated crash area. This allowed the SEDAR crews to practice different techniques for loading, unloading, and moving this equipment. These procedures range from simply hauling and storage to complex lifting techniques. The SEDAR requires access to many different pieces of equipment. As they can never be sure exactly what they'll encounter at a crash site. In many cases, an aircraft may only need to be towed. So crews will attach shackles and other devices where they can hook up tow ropes and chains.
In order to avoid failure, they will generally do this at multiple points throughout the plane's undercarriage. These heavy-duty tow ropes will then be attached to one or more tugs. These are high-torque vehicles capable of towing immense amounts of weight. In the case of some larger aircraft, it might be necessary to lift all or parts of the plane without using a crane. This can be accomplished using specialized inflatable crash bags. When placed under the wing and inflated, the compressed air inside can lift immense amounts of weight. This can prevent additional damage and help make the rest of the recovery process more manageable. Damage to the aircraft itself is not the only major concern ground crews need to consider in the event of a crash. Planes and helicopters run on highly combustible fuel, which can cause fast-spreading fires that put lives and equipment at risk. Military firefighters often practice putting out these types of blazes using derelict airframes or mock-ups. This provides a much more realistic training scenario and gives them real experience dealing with fires in a controlled environment. These fire crews also need to be able to attend to crashes that might be miles away from the nearest base or water source. For this reason, it is imperative that they be able to put out fires quickly and efficiently. New or old, military planes are valuable pieces of equipment. They can be used not only for training and simulations, but also for replacement parts and even museum displays. For this reason, it's important to protect every inch of the system's interior and exterior. Again, most boneyards in the United States are located in the American Southwest. This is because the dry air helps prevent corrosion. However, it also introduces new risks in the form of dirt, dust, sand, and sun exposure. This is why aircraft stored at these massive outdoor facilities are covered with a special protective coating known as spray lat. This liquid is specifically designed to protect the surfaces from the effects of weather, UV radiation, and other environmental factors. It is generally applied with spray guns or airless paint sprayers. Once dried, it forms a protective barrier over the surface of the plane. 
It is typically used in conjunction with wrappings and other materials that can help cover more sensitive parts of the plane, like propellers, engine intakes, and cockpits. Military aircraft are not the only planes and helicopters with immense value regardless of their condition. For this reason, hundreds of commercial aircraft boneyards have sprung up worldwide. However, these facilities differ in that they work with all sorts of out-of-service aircraft. They might simply store a plane for later use, knowing full well it will fly again someday. Of course, they can also pillage dismantled planes for parts or even scrap and recycle them for their various components. A good example is Twente Airport in the Netherlands. This large aircraft boneyard has vast resources to aid in repairing, overhauling, and scrapping sizable commercial aircraft. Since the cost of storing planes at an active airport can be costly, airlines will often fly their unused planes to Twente for revitalization or to be used for maintenance practice. A similar facility can be found at the Tarbes Lourdes Airport in France. Here, a company called Tarmac Aerosafe can store up to 350 aircraft on over 100 acres. As the company is committed to sustainable aviation, it has been at the forefront of aircraft recycling programs allowing it to recycle up to 95% of components from a dismantled plane or helicopter. Tarmac Aerosafe's process has been continually refined over the years. It starts with parts removal for USM, which stands for unserviceable spar material. This refers to aircraft parts that are no longer viable unless they are entirely refurbished at a specialized facility. This process also initiates the dismantling process, where components are carefully taken apart and placed on pallets for further inspection. The next step in the process is material segregation, in which different parts of the plane are separated by type, allowing for easier recycling or disposal. Next, massive equipment is used to cut and deconstruct the plane's fuselage. This includes large chainsaws that slowly separate the plane into manageable sections. There is actually a huge market for USM throughout the aerospace industry. This is primarily due to the shortage of raw materials in an increasingly complex supply chain. So, in order to develop a more supportive supply chain, industry experts are increasingly turning to refurbished parts. Aside from private companies like Tarmac Aerosafe, more and more significant airlines like Boeing have also committed themselves to give their aircraft, and as many parts as possible, a second life. One of the most significant ways that Boeing contributes to a greener and more sustainable aerospace industry is by converting some of its retired passenger planes into freighters. This process is generally expected to give each plane roughly 20 more years of life. However, it is not necessarily straightforward. First, all the seats, storage bins, and lavatories must be removed entirely. From there, Boeing will cut a large hole in the side of the fuselage and convert it into a working cargo door. 
The floor structure must also be updated, as freight requires much stronger and more versatile flooring than a passenger plane. They also include rollers and tie-down straps to make loading and unloading easier. Several other organizations, including Israel Aerospace Industries, also performs passenger freighter conversions, saving themselves billions of dollars over the life of their fleets. That's the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure to subscribe to this channel so you don't miss any of our new content. See you next time.